assignment to me that we uh, assigned here for Thursday. I want to write this down one more time. Page 628. Okay. Page 628. And do for Thursday. Ouch. Ivy. <laughs> My goodness. Stinky and now you're hurting people. What the snark. Okay, right, so make sure you've got that down. Page, uh, page 628. 28, 1 through 15, due Thursday. Have we all got that down? Yeah. Okay, so, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. This section may be the most important section we cover all year. I'm going to be honest with you. If you don't understand the foundation here, these are the basics to where we're headed with stuff. Uh, if you don't understand this part right here, i got news for you about this whole chapter. It's not going to go well, okay? So, without a doubt, the most important section we're going to look at here probably all year. Okay? Make sure you understand it. So, uh, 5.2 is entitled Opposites in the Distributive Property. Opposites, not so much of a problem, but the big idea or the big uh, part that's going to be really important for us to understand uh, is going to be right here. And it's called the Distributive Property. Now, quick question. How many of you guys have heard of Distributive Property before? Okay. Uh, if you were pre integrated with me last year, we looked at it uh, a little bit. Uh, anybody recall what Distributive Property is? All right, that's okay. That's we're going to revisit it today. So uh, let's go ahead and check out our goal, find out what it is we're trying to accomplish today, and see what this means. Uh, volunteer to read my goal for me. Go, Bree. Simplify expressions and solve equations involving opposites and distribute the property in the combining matrix. Okay, so we're going to be, it looks like, some simplifying expressions, solving some equations. What's the difference between an expression and an equation? What does an equation have that an expression doesn't? Yes? An equal sign, okay? So we're gonna have stuff that has an equal sign, some stuff that does not. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get this vocab terms down, make sure we understand what we're talking about. But opposites, opposites are pretty easy. If I have a positive, what's its opposite? Negative. If I have a negative, what's its opposite? Okay, so honestly here, the opposite just simply is gonna mean to switch your what? Switch positives to what? Negatives, or can I say vice versa? Is that okay? I like writing vice versa. Vice versa. If I had a club track team, you know what I would call them? Or vice versa. We're going to turn tables on you. We're going to whoop you. You like that? Let's be vice versa tonight in our game. How's that sound? Turn the tables on people. Sound like a plan, Lauren? Should I say that in the pregame? Should I bring up the phrase vice versa in our pregame? Yeah, that can be like a, um, okay. Lauren, how was the talk last night after the game? Was it good or was it bad? It was good. Positive six. What's its opposite? Negative, Negative twenty-two. What's its opposite? Positive pi. Negative. Yeah, positive pi. Like zero pi. Negative. Okay, negative pi. All right. Are we good to go there? Okay. Just we'll switch signs. All right. A couple things that we'll look at when we do opposite examples. We'll talk about uh, this idea of double negatives here in a second. But uh, just understand that. Well, I'll get here in a second. All right, let's get the other definition down. Distributive property, okay? The distributive property, the way I like to explain it, is a way that we write expressions. Sometimes expressions will have these things in it, or these things that I'm alluding to. Parentheses. Distributive property allows us to write, allows us to write equivalent expressions without parentheses. So basically, it allows us to, how do I want to say this so I'm, Sounding intelligent for Haley right now. Well, Haley thinks I'm crazy anyway, doesn't she? So it don't matter, right? It don't matter. It don't matter. I could open the door next to the English people and say it don't matter. She would see what they say. It don't matter. <laughs> I seen that on a video. <laughs> English people. Cray cray. All right, distributive property. Here's what I want to write. Um, 
um, use to write use to write expressions without what? If I put this up here, w slash zero, do you understand, or w slash zero, you understand that means without? Without, and I'm going to put the parentheses around here. Basically what it allows us to do is to write equivalent expressions with or without parentheses, depending on which way we go. Our purposes today, we're going to look to try and get rid of parentheses to be able to simplify expressions, combine like terms, or solve equations. That's going to be your job, okay? So really, this is going to be kind of a way to help us eliminate what, guys? Eliminate the parentheses. Okay, kiddos. Let me know when you've got that written down. We'll start looking at some examples here. Everybody ready to rock and roll here? Okay. If I put down something like this, if I say, here's what we're going to start with. So if I say we start with 22, what's the opposite? The opposite would be negative 22, okay? I want you to keep something in mind, and I want you to hear this really uh, right now, okay? So you understand how we talk about this idea of double negatives. Guys, if I started with positive 22, the opposite of 22 is negative 22, right? So if this is 22, I could also read this instead of negative 22. I could read this here as the opposite of what? This is, could be also be read as the opposite of, I'll abbreviate, opposite of 22, okay? The opposite of 22. So, watch what I have here. If I put negative 63 down for my start like this, what's the opposite of that going to be? Negative or positive 63? Positive 63, okay? So when I have something like this right here, if I start with negative 63, or this is also read as start with the opposite of 63, where are you going to go to? Well, it would be the opposite, which would be 63. So I want to put something up here, guys. What if they say something like this? What's this equal? What do you think that equals right there? Positive 22. Watch what I do here. Remember, this is negative 22 in parentheses, right? That negative sign could also be read as, again, the opposite of. Do you guys agree right here that what I really have, this part is really saying the opposite of what value, guys? Isn't that really saying the opposite of negative 22 right there? Isn't that really what that's saying? So we have two negatives right next to each other. That really becomes a what? Positive. So this is really read as the opposite of a negative 22, which is really going to be what value? Well, Cass nailed it. All right? Okay. Understand opposites? Pretty gosh darn easy, right? Okay. All right. So we've already given the elbow drop to opposites. That's pretty easy. Let's see if we can't put this distributive property on a bigger four leg lock and make it tap out. Sound good? Yep. Sound good? Any of you guys watched the Anaconda thing the other night? Yeah, it was watched stupid. It? He gave up. It was a joke, wasn't it? I got tired of them just kind of talking. I was like, just do, just do it. I didn't care about the jungle. And I didn't care that nobody lived there. But cool. They like wasted two hours to do nothing. That would so be a scary happened. place to go, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to be walking around there by yourself, Brianna? Well, no, but you should sit there. Scary, scary, scary. People are like freaking out on him over Twitter though. Really? Yeah. Like and saying every, what? Everyone was super mad that like they like dragged it on him. And yeah, like, dragged it on and he tapped out. Yeah. It's okay. This guy was trying to get eaten by a snake. Alive. Alive. And he just stuck his hand in the anaconda's mouth with the camera and gave up. Yeah, it was bad. So. I don't know. He had time to come up to me. I'd probably deliver her. Uh, it wasn't even the one that they wanted to get, though. I know. He had time to come up to me. I'd probably give him the opposite reciprocal and then put a flying parabola on it, and it would be out of misery. Yeah. You don't 
don't mess with the square root thing. Wait, did that guy He was trying to get eaten by this thing with all this infrared stuff and this carbon fiber suit that had all these cameras on it because they wanted to see what it was like on the inside of them. I'm like, well, just kill it, cut it open, see what it's like. Yeah. Only well, good snake in my book? A dead one. All right. Sorry, Haley. We're off topic. That's okay, though. It's the first time it's ever happened in my class. Fact. Yeah. Not. You know Haley's not in here, right? She's, right. She's I'm talking to her. Oh. All right. Here's the big idea. Here's the big important stuff. Distributive property. Okay. Distributive property. If you can remember this, here's the deal. Guys, if I had money to hand out, what would be the fair thing to do if I was giving money to all of you in my class? Right? The fair thing would be to give everybody the same amount. Well, that's what distributed property is kind of doing, okay? If you can kind of imagine yourself as a group of people in parentheses, okay? So my kiddos in this class are like the kids in my parentheses. My class is in my set of parentheses. And a teacher is going to give many money today, all right? Well, I'm really giving you knowledge, right? Okay. If I was giving you money, okay? I would be out on the outside of parentheses, and I would give each part in parentheses the same amount. Are you thinking of it that way? Okay. So if I had $20 to give to everybody, I'd just give 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, okay? Trust me, if I ever win the lottery, I guarantee you all $10,000. I'll give you every single one of you $10,000 if I win the lottery, okay? That's a promise. Ooh, I shouldn't say that when I'm recording. All right. I could take that to court, didn't I? Probably could. Watch me win the lottery now. You guys are taking it to court for $10,000, won't you? Well, Carson said, it's on the internet. Okay. All right. Well, let's roll. Distributive property much uh, is like this. I'm going to start out with a numerical example right here. Uh, something like this. Suppose I have three times, let's just go six plus four. Okay, so we've done order of operation stuff in the past. I would know to start with parentheses to evaluate this. Do you guys agree? Number one. What would the 6 plus 4 be in parentheses? 10. And then 10 times 3 up front would get us a product of 30, right? 30. Okay? 30. All right? a question. What the heck does distributive property mean? We know what this is going to equal what value? 30. I'm going to put 30 here. Distributive property says take everything that's inside. The 6 and the 4 is like my class. You piece it here. And to each one person, I'm going to go ahead and multiply them by a 3. Okay. Basically, you take what's on the outside and multiply it to everything that's on the inside. So you're going to draw lots of arrows. Basically, this is the same as saying 3 times what first? Plus 3 times what? I distributed the 3 to the 6. That's this part, 3 times 6. I also distribute the 3 to the 4. That's this part, 3 times 4. Guys, you meant that math help me because I need all the help I can get. What is 3 times 6? Whoops. What is 3 times 4? Question here. What's 18 plus 12 equal? 30. 30, right? Are they the same thing? They are. Now, numerically, it was easier for us to do order of operations, 10 times 3, right? But we also said, you know what, this is the same as taking 3 times 6, that product of 18, plus 3 times 4, that product of 12, to get us 30. So why is this important to use? Well, here's the reason. You're going to start looking at examples that have variable expressions. You want to write an equivalent expression in terms of variables, so something like maybe this. You might have to times this time, maybe a 2x minus 7. How does this expression right here differ from the first example? Well, you have a what in it? There's a variable, right? Okay. Same idea. A lot of your job today, rewrite the expression or rewrite this expression uh, as an equivalent expression without parentheses. Give me an equivalent expression. If they ever say that, your job is to distribute. If they say write something without parentheses or write an equivalent express, uh, expression without parentheses, you will distribute. Okay? Don't ever forget distributive property. If you don't know how to distribute, you don't know how to do math. Let me 
say it again. That's going to be my campaign slogan in 2016 when I run for president. If you don't know how to distribute, you don't know how to do the math. That's a good one, isn't it? That would be good just to throw in right at the end of a speech about education. Yes. I like that. Parson in 2016. Help me out. We're going to take three times. What's the first part of the expression inside of parentheses? Three times two... X. What is three times two going to get you first? So this is going to become six what then? Six All right. I'm skipping a jump. Six X. Gnarly. Then I'm going to take six. I'm sorry. The three times what else here? Seven. What kind of seven is that? Negative. negative. Now be careful on this. You're going to take a three times negative seven. Positive three times negative seven would be what? Negative so I'm going to put a minus 21 at the end of this. What's an equivalent expression for this without parentheses then? You would tell me. 6x minus what? Remind me, where did this 6x just come from? 3 times 2x. 3 times 2x. Where did the minus 21 come from? I've taken the 3 and given it to everybody in class, right? Everybody understand what I'm talking about here? What's the property you need to know in order to know math? Distributive property. If you don't know how to distribute, you don't know what you're doing. Okay? Page 2. All right, kiddos. I guarantee you've looked at stuff like this before. Okay, these are two-step equations that I'm going to start looking at. Okay, our job is to start looking at solving an equation. Cassidy already told us the difference between an expression and an equation is that an equation will have a what in it. What's this equation have that an expression doesn't have? An equal sign. Anytime you have an equal sign, you're going to get a value for a solution. I want to know what x is equal to in order to make this statement true. So, to remind you of what we've done in the past, we're looking at solving this equation right here, where 3 times a number plus 4 is 22. First of all, can anybody do that number mentally in their head? Eighteen divided by three is. Answer is going to be six here, right? Okay, think about it. What's three times six, kiddos? What would 3 times 6 get you? 18 plus 4, is that 22? So that means that 3 times the number has to be 18, so we know x is going to equal 6, right? Right here are some rules to remember. Uh, <laughs> rules to remember is what I meant to say. Okay, sorry, I'm done. I'm done. Are you guys awake today? That's okay. Rules to remember, what's the first thing to say to you? Rules to remember. Make sure you do what? Distribute. distribute. Okay, what's distribute mean to do? Get rid of the... Okay, I'm going to write this down here. Get rid of the parentheses. We already know how to do that. Got a question here. What's this combined like term stuff talking about right here? I have a question here. What if you had something like 7x plus 4 plus 2x minus 2 right here. Are there parts of this expression that I can choose to put together? You can find 7x and 2x. 7x and 2x. They're both positive, aren't they? We've kind of talked about this this year. What's 7x and 2x going to combine to? Add them up. Be 9x. This is the same as 9x. Uh, anything else I can choose to put together that doesn't involve a variable? Yes. What is it? Positive 4, and what kind of 2 again there, Christian? Negative. If I choose to put a positive 4 and a negative 2 together under rules of addition or subtraction, what are they going to combine to? Positive 4 and negative 2. What's the value? Two. Uh, negative 2. Positive two. positive 2. So what am I going to put after the 9x after I combine stuff? 9x plus 2. In simplest form, this expression that I originally wrote on the left is 9x plus what? Value! Two. Wow. Lesson board. You don't see the board talking back to me anymore, do you? <laughs> That's what I thought, Chantilla. Okay.
same kind of stuff as you. I'll win. First one to laugh loses. The first one to laugh loses. Ready, go. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm doing this with track. I'm also the undefeated staring champion of the world as well. Wait, okay. can, I, can I try it one more time, please? <laughs> like, no, like, like, no laughing. <laughs> Addition or subtraction first, then undo multiplication division. If I'm undoing addition, what's the inverse of addition? Subtract. If I'm undoing um, the multiplication, you would divide. So I'm going to go back to this example that we had right up here. We had uh, 3x plus 4 was equal to 18, right? Or I'm sorry, 22, wasn't it? Guys, quick question. Are there any parentheses to get rid of in the example we started with? The answer would be what? No. No, no way. Uh, how about, do I need to combine anything on the left? Can I combine 3x and 4 at all? No. No, nothing on the right. You just have the expression 22. So to solve this equation, it says to undo addition or subtraction first. You're trying to isolate your variable. Get x alone. What's its value? In other words, I've got addition of 4. So you guys kind of alluded to me already what you would do with that. Somebody had said, get rid of plus 4, you're going to do what here, Christian? Subtract a 4, yep. Subtract a 4. Gnarly. Okay. So these are gone, aren't they? And you would have 3x equals 18. Now, doesn't this really say 3 times x right there, gang? So how are you going to undo the multiplication part now? Divide both sides by what? Divide by 3, and your value is 6. Okay. So let's see what we've got here. I want to look at the next page here quick. Kind of see where we're at. Is that the last page right here? Is this one the last page? Is that the last page? There's two more left. Ah, I see why. Ah, here we go. I like this stuff. Okay, so let's look at an example right here that uh, I think that you guys can handle. Um, I'm going to go back to the one that we were just at. Okay. I'm going to have you try a couple problems on your own. I want to make sure that you're okay with this. So let's go 6x minus 5 equals 25. And I'm going to try and trick you here. Let's go 2 times x minus 3 is equal to, I don't know, 22. Okay. Go ahead and take a second see if you can't solve those two equations. Make sure you're on the right page. I think we're okay with this part. They're going to get more difficult as we progress through the notes. But uh, maybe when you get those two, check with someone around you and, and make sure you agree, okay? An answer to my first one. Britain, what have you got? Five. Who's got the second one? Peyton? I'm here at 514. How many have 514 here? Real quickly, who wants to volunteer to chat me through this real quickly? Cats, you got it? x is 30, and then 30 divided by 6 would have gotten you what value? 
Awesome. How many have five again? Just give me a show of hands. Great. Next one here, kiddos. <coughs> what's uh, what's got to be taken care of first in this next example? You got to time something. You got to get rid of the press. So what was the word again, Mariah? Distribute. Distribute. Two times x would become a. Two x. So we're rewriting the left side as an equivalent expression without parentheses or distributing, if you will. All y'all agree with my distribution? Yeah. Add six, divide by what? Yeah. Got to add six to undo the subtraction, right? Yeah. So if I add a six here, boom, boom, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody what me or what in front of me? Oh, no, okay, because I was gonna say what the what? <laughs> what the what? All right, let's twenty to my two kiddos. Fourteen. That was pretty easy, right? That was pretty easy, right? Right? Okay, so good. It's too easy, so we need a challenge. So let's head on to the next page here in our notes. All y'all got that down? Do any more time with that? Okay. Well, let's look at some opposite stuff here. Some rules about opposites. We already talked about this right here. This here is uh, negative 5 to start with. So really the opposite of a negative is going to be a positive. So this is really read as the opposite of what? This is read as the opposite of, of 5. Okay. Now right here we've got this double negative part right here, guys. This is really saying the opposite of what kind of value here? What page are we in? What, what page? What, did I, am I out of order with you guys? Yeah, yeah. Here's your sheet. Okay, well, why don't you just go to the one that I'm on? I must have gotten flipped the wrong way, so make sure you find that one there, okay? Opposite rules here real quickly, gang. You agree that negative 5, negative 5 is equal to the opposite of what? 5. This is how you would read this, right? So negative 5 could also be read as the opposite 5. Do you guys agree that this here could be read then as the opposite of what? This is read as the opposite of, what's in parentheses, gang? Negative 3. Well, what's the opposite of a negative going to be? So anytime you have this double negative stuff right here like this, this is really what value? Positive what? 3. Are you guys okay with that? Anytime you have that double negative stuff, it's really a positive. Because we read this as the opposite of what kind of a value? The opposite of what kind of a value? opposite of a negative. negative would be a positive. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's look at some examples quickly. See, we can't figure out these values. It says using negative signs in front of expressions. The first one says this. The opposite of negative 18, what's this going to equal? Positive. positive 18. Okay. Wow. Because this is read as the opposite of negative 18, right? Isn't this a double negative deal right here? So what's a double negative really going to turn into? A positive, right? Yeah. The opposite sign is the first negative right here, right? This is my opposite of statement. And then what value? Negative 3, right? This is the opposite of negative the opposite of part counts for the first negative sign. And then the value is negative 3 in parentheses, right? Kids, you don't make this harder than it has to be. I'm simply saying that a double negative is a positive. A single negative is still a negative. Is it? This part right here, the opposite of, refers to the very first negative sign right there. And then in parentheses, there's that negative 3 part of it. Got it? Okay. So all I'm saying here on these is this, guys. If you have two negatives, what kind of a value is it? Positive. If you have one negative, it's still a what? Negative. So this is still negative n right here, isn't it? How about this one? What's this going to be? Positive n. Because there's a double negative in there, right? Understand the difference? Right here, guys, we got 7 plus 4 in parentheses. What is that? What's 7 plus 4 in parentheses going to be? 11. 11. Okay, we want the opposite of 11, which is going to be what here? There you go. Don't make this difficult. What's 
Just don't one overthink one. that. Which one? Last one's negative, yep. Because it just wants the opposite of the positive 11, doesn't it? That's all it's the same, isn't it? Isn't that sign right as the opposite of? Opposite of what's this value in here? Positive 11. What's the opposite of a positive? Right? Make sense? Yes. Sure. Doing what? All right, next page then quickly. Let's put this stuff into action. Guys, it says a negative sign in front of what? A negative sign in front of parenthesis changes each sign. So listen to me on this. If you have something like this, a negative in front of x minus 6, like this, if you have a negative in front of an expression like x minus 6, the negative out front is going to change every sign here. Now, do you guys agree that in parentheses, there's no sign right between the parentheses and the x right here, right? So realistically, what kind of x is this? It's really a positive right now, isn't it? Okay. So I'm saying if you ever have a negative right in front of a set of parentheses, this negative is going to go in here and do what to these two signs here and here? Here, what's the rule say up here? It's going to switch them, right? Okay, so what's the positive x going to become when we write this without parentheses? This will become a negative x. And then how about the minus 6? What's that going to become? Okay, so if you ever have a negative out in front of an expression in parentheses, that negative right out in front is going to do what to everything inside of parentheses when you rewrite it? What's it going to do with those signs? It's going to change them, right? Okay, so let's look at these simplifying expressions. First example I have right here is the following. It says uh, the opposite of negative x plus 3. What's this negative going to do to everything in parentheses if we want to simplify this without parentheses? It's going to change both signs. So the x will become a positive x. And how about the plus 3? There it is. You guys tell me what you're going to have here. Raise your hand, please. Somebody tell me what the second one is. Positive 3x. Positive 3x minus, minus 5. I agree. And again, the only time you change signs on something inside of parentheses like that is when you have what kind of sign in front of that set of parentheses? Negatives. Negatives. Okay. Well, let's get... Let's get goofy. We want to simplify as much as possible. Out front, you have a value out front here. Okay? Don't worry about that now. But the first thing you really like to get rid of before you can simplify this completely is to get rid of your what? Parentheses. 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 It's just like a, what do I want to say? It's like a nose hair that's sticking out. You just don't want it there. And get rid of it, right? Okay? Oh, come on. We've all had a nose hair. It's a little too long, right? Okay. Warren P. is not experienced in the world of Okay, it's like a snake in the You just got to get rid of it, right? Okay. Leave the 18 alone. Okay, guys, isn't there a minus sign right in front of parentheses right in this expression? Isn't there a minus sign right in front of parentheses there? Yes. There is, right? What's this minus sign going to do to that positive x? So I'm going to call this minus x. And what's that minus sign going to do to the plus 6? Make it a minus 6, okay? Check yourself. You guys agree with what I have up there? Okay. Uh, is there anything I can combine up there now? I know I've got rid of parentheses, but is there anything I can choose to put together to simplify this further? 18 6. 18 6. Well, what kind of 6 we got, Gabe? Negative. So I'm going to combine this 18 with the <laughs> negative 6. What is that value? 12. So I can really call this 12 minus what? There it is. 12 minus x would be my simplest form. Okay. Next one right here. Do I need to work with the 4x just yet? No. Call us 4x. Okay. There's that minus sign right in front of parentheses again. What's that minus sign going to do to the 7x? Negative 7x. What's that minus sign going to do to the minus 13? Okay. So I've gotten rid of parentheses. How about anything to put together to simplify the expression? 
4x and what kind of 7x there, Bree? What's a positive 4x and negative 7x going to combine two kiddos? Negative 3x then, and what's going to be attached to the end? Plus 13. Plus 13. There it is. One thing I might also tell you is this. If you're checking answers in the back of the book when you're doing your assignment, you might also see this written as positive 13 minus 3x. Just a point of clarification here. In each case, is it 13 positive in both of these? Got a positive 13 here and a positive 13 here, right? Yes. How about my 3x's? Are they both negative in each case? Okay. Guys good there? Guys good there? Everybody have that down? Anybody need more time with that page? Did you go back on anything? All good? And again, both of those are the same thing. You understand why they're the same? Understand? You understand this expression and this expression are the same thing. And it doesn't matter which way you write your final answer. Good? Okay. All right, are we on the last page, kiddos? Is this the last page? All right. All right, the last examples that we'll look at here are going to involve solving some stuff here that's, that's, that's kind of tough. Okay. That first one looks pretty easy, doesn't it? First one looks pretty easy, doesn't it? 12 minus the numbers, negative 13. Well, in all honesty, guys, this problem isn't that easy. All right? Guys, when I say uh, take 12 minus x right here, when I say take 12 minus x, how many x are you really subtracting? How many x is this right here? This is really 1x right there, isn't it? OK. First things first, I, I, I get your rules to solve an equation. The first thing I get rid of is parentheses. No, there ain't parentheses in this when I solve an equation. No, sir. Okay. Um, I don't like the way this is written. I like to have my variables out front. So I'm going to rewrite this left side. I'm going to call this negative 1x plus 12. That's that idea that we just looked at. And I'm going to say this is equal to negative 13. Okay, check yourself out right here. All I did was move the negative 1x to the front, didn't I? Isn't this really a positive 12 right here? Mm -hmm. So if I move stuff around, you need to move the sign that's right in front of it with it, right? OK. Uh, all right, help me uh, solve this. What am I going to have to do first? To get x alone. Subtract a 12 from both sides. Boom and boom, right? Uh, this becomes negative 1x equal to Let's go negative 13 minus 12. Where are you? Ooh, careful. Careful, careful, careful. You went to the store, you spent $13. You went to the second store, you spent another $12. How much? You're $25 down now, right? Okay, equal negative 25. Okay, now guys, x is not completely alone because we want that to be a positive 1x. So I'm going to have to get rid of that multiplication of negative 1 by dividing by what? Divide both sides by a negative 1. So in this case right here, on the right side, what is a negative 1 divided by a negative? Positive, right? Positive 25. Wait, how can the 13 and 12 multiply? Not multiplying, right? It's an operation. It's not one negative right next to a negative. You're saying start with negative 13 and back up 12 more units. So if you run a number line at negative 13, here's 0, right? Negative 13 would be to the left. Go 12 further to the left. Wouldn't that be negative 25 units to the left total then, Lauren? See it? Okay. All right, let's try another. Ooh, I don't like this next one because what's in there? Parentheses. Parentheses. So I'm going to leave the 20 out front alone. Guys, what kind of 3 are you distributing with, a positive or a negative? Positive. So you're going to take positive 3 times x. So what is positive 3 times positive x? Three. So you put positive 3x right after that. Okay? And then I need to distribute the 3 to the negative 2. Help me out. What's a positive 3 that we're distributing with to a negative 2? <coughs> so what am I going to put after the 3x? A minus 6. Okay, then the second rule said, in order to solve this, are there any things, look at the left side of the equation, look at the right side of the equation. On the left side, is there anything I can put together before I proceed? 20 and 6. 20 and what kind of 6? Negative. Okay, so this would really be positive 3x. What is 20 minus 6? 
plus 14. Everybody see where the 14 just came from? So 20 and negative 6 combined on the left side, right? Still equal to what value on the right, gang? And two-step your way to the end now. Subtract A. Subtract A. All agree. Subtract 14. 14 is cancel. You'll have 3x is 15. Solve this then. 3 times uh, what would make 15? Or 15 divided by 3 would be your solution. What is the solution? What's your solution? 5, right? x equals 5. Very good. You guys feel pretty comfortable with this? I'll come back up to this. I just want to see what I have left here. Are you guys okay on that one? Okay. Um, what's the difference in the distribution over here? What kind of 3 are you distributing with this time? Who loves that? What kind of 3 is this? Negative. So I'm going to distribute with a negative, okay? So keep this in mind. So we'll get through this example here quickly in the last one. I don't think we'll get through the story problem, so let me get through the two problems here. Maybe we can get that story problem set up and I can have you finish that for tomorrow. By the way, I told you book page due Thursday already, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Okay. Leave the 26 out front. Leave it alone. Here we go. Let's distribute. What's negative 3 times h going to be? Got to distribute negative 3 to everything in parentheses, right? Negative 3h. Careful on the next part. Got to distribute that negative 3 into the 5. It's really negative 3 times positive 5, isn't it? Yeah. Which is? Negative 15. So a minus 15. Okay, kiddos, good. Parts to put together on either side. What kind of 15? 26 and negative 15. I'm going to circle them. We're going to put them together. I like to have my variables out front, so I'm going to bring the negative 3h out to the front. Uh, how about that combination of 26 and negative 15? Where are you, kiddos? Negative Not negative 11. 26 is more than 15, isn't it? Yeah. So how about a positive. positive 11? So after the negative 3h, I want to write plus what? Is what value still? 24. Now, I want you to keep in mind, not everything is going to have a magic number or a nice, even full number to pull out to when you're done here. So I'm going to have to subtract 11 here. Um, on the left side, the 11s are gone. So I'd have negative 3h equal to what value on the right? Isn't that 13 here? Isn't this 13? Yes. Okay. Does negative 3 go evenly into 13? No, so check it. Um, I'm going to take 13 and divide by what, guys? So let's do that. Here we go. 13 divided by what? What's, what, what's, uh, what, what am I getting up there? Negative 4.3 repeating, right? Or negative 4 and a third, if you will. Okay? Negative 4 and a third, if you will. Okay? So my H value would be negative 4.3. Okay. All right. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and stop there. We'll get these last two done here. Uh, the story problem I'll hit first thing tomorrow, but uh, playing on some time in class to work. Book page is the only thing for now. When's that due? Um, I have your test scores in on JMC right now. I'm not going to be able to get through all of these here in the minute that we have left. So if you want to see your test, stop in and see me before you leave today. Those people that made plans, make sure you come through and get in and get that test done. Also, if you know what you got on your test through JMC already and you want to retake that, you've got a week's time to come in and redo that, okay? There's an FFA meeting next You guys have a great day. Again, there's an FFA with the colleges. Please come to the office. Colton Adams, Ethan Connor, Houston Freeman, Rachel Hall, Allie Monahan, Lily Wolfather, Trey Redmond, Jordan Schmidt, Gabe Schoenberger, Brian Sells, Muna, Carly Sparks, William Sparks, Bethany Steffen, Ethan Steffen, and Justin Stock.
that's what you want to do, that's fine. Hi. Uh, I have not yet, no. Yep. When will you have that grade? Because, like, it pulled me all the way down to a C, and it 